charging an EV anywhere from the sun? Wait till you see this. Welcome back to Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from GoSun is founder and CEO Patrick Sherwin. Great seeing you again, Patrick. Awesome to be here, Fred. Thanks for having me. Well, you have been harnessing the power of the sun for all kinds of things, from cooking to boating, and now EV car charging. Tell us about this. You know, I've been on a long odyssey to power our lives with the sun. It's ne nearly 25 years in the industry, and mobility is one of those tough to hit targets. We know that um, the automotive or just the transportation sector in general is, you know, 25 to 30 percent of global carbon emissions. And that's a tough nut to crack. And I used to think that uh, putting solar on an automotive on a car wasn't possible, that there wasn't enough energy density. Well, we ran the numbers a couple of years ago and then um, started watching closely these trends with flexible solar panels um, where they're getting efficiencies that are, you know, over 20 percent. So basically the highest efficiency and the module is still flexible. And what we've done after a bunch of different iterations and prototypes and design is we've taken a four by four foot box, uh, which is kind of like a rooftop carrier, you know, like you might find from Thule or Yakima. Um, you put that, you mount that on your roof rack. On top of the box is a 200 watt stationary panel. Then within it, is uh, basically 1,000 watts of folding solar panels. So when you park the car, you unfold the panels across the, the body of the vehicle. And and then, again, the, the possibilities of meeting your energy needs are, are really vast. Uh, it's not going to meet all of your energy needs all of the time if you own an electric car. But, uh, you know, 20 miles a day is totally achievable here, especially during this time of year in the summer. That's that's interesting. So it unfolds and lays on on the on the hood and down the back of of the vehicle. Yeah, uh, we had a number of different schemes over over the last year where we started to get very serious about this idea, and um, you know it just was too cost prohibitive or um, you know too complex to do to do the array in another way. Uh, so. Uh, we've we've developed ways to you know put this on the body of the vehicle without causing damage um, and keeping it uh, strapped to the vehicle through you know a wide variety of weather you know overnight day in day out like if you parked at the airport and your car was you know 20 percent charged go on a five day trip you might come back and it's 80 percent charged uh, and and you're not worried about it during that time period it's theft protected it's held down onto the body. And then we've got these little uh, rubberized pads to help prevent uh, scratching onto the, the paint. What what were the biggest challenges here? Obviously, I mean, the power delivery uh, is is a tough one. And it seems like you're 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 delivering what's possible at the moment for customers, right? That that that's what you have to look at. You're not going to fully charge a vehicle except over a matter of days, like you said. But you are giving people who are maybe parked at the beach or something that, you know, you're giving them something, sir. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 10 percent uh, battery charged a day generally meets the average driving needs. You know, every day is different, but uh, electric vehicle owners drive on average around 19 miles a day. Uh, so, you know, during the, you know, six months of the year where where we have a lot more sun, uh, this will meet their needs to some to some extent, maybe not every day. But the biggest challenge has largely been in the electronic side. Uh, we we know again, the flexible solar advent has really allowed for this to be possible. And then uh, what we're doing is is capturing that in a and we have to basically create uh, household electric, you know, level one AC power because electric car manufacturers aren't letting us go directly to the vehicle's battery with the DC power from the sun. So we've got a small, what we're calling like a buffer battery to accept the sunshine. And then we're inverting that and meeting electric vehicle charging protocol uh, and just plugging straight into the exterior carport. And 
those, you know, again, luckily, electronics have advanced so much in the last several years, last decade, that that that's also now feasible uh, and cost effective. So those those are kind of the com combination of the flexible solar mixed with uh, amazing power electronics and, you know, lithium, iron phosphate, energy storage has really what uh, has been what's enabled this to be possible. And you're using you you provide the actual connector to go into the car, from what I understand. Yeah. And that's uh, another great advancement is is that's now universal in North America. That NAC standard, that sort of the Tesla charging connector, kind of won the battle. And now you know, as of twenty twenty four, that's the new North American standard, and, and you know, vehicles are all going to be built with that. And of course, it's not too hard to adapt from that to whatever an older vehicle may have. Are there other ports on this? Hey, can the power be used other than uh, into into an EV? Yeah, because you've got 110 volt AC power, you've got battery storage. It's not going to be hard for us to provide 12 volt USB ports. Uh, and, and again, a small amount of household power. Interesting. So you're taking reservations now. Tell us how this works. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the the new model where, you know, it's it's a it's a prototype, it's a proven idea. Um, but we we aren't in production. So we wanted to capture the realities of, you know, if you want one of these, get in line. Uh, similar to how, you know, Tesla operates a lot of their new vehicle launches, like the Cybertruck, for example. And uh we, you know, it helps us. It's a little bit like crowdfunding. You know, it helps GoSun to uh, recognize that there is a large demand for the product so that we can really invest in its proper engineering, development, testing, regulatory, shipping, logistics, all the big things that we have to do that's going to cost, you know, a million dollars. And, and we've got enough interest to justify spending that money. Could your technology here be used uh, beyond putting panels on the car. I don't know if you're looking, mix, messing around with that at all, but you know, people have solar panels um, to go yeah, to the car. I was just talking to a friend who's working on a, on a project. Don't remember the Island off, off New York where they're trying to build a, a eco innovation center. And um, while they're constructing the building, they're not they're not going to have enough power out on the island. They want to do it in the cleanest and greenest way, so they don't want to just have a bunch of diesel generators. So this is a sweet way to bring a lot of power somewhere for a temporary period of time. It's the highest you know power to weight ratio or power to size ratio um, ever found in solar. Uh, just a four by four foot box. It's very durable. You ship it anywhere. It's only five inches thick. And then when you unfold it, you know, it's 17 feet long and it's five times the, the previous size and power. So we're finding a lot of different applications and things are coming out through the woodwork. And of course, this applies very well for additional mobile applications like uh, the camping world, you know, like van life or, you know, job site vehicles, trailers and trucks where you're charging a lot of electric power tools. Really exciting. So uh, what is the pricing going to come in at? And uh, tell us about the uh, the process here with the reservations. Yeah, the, the deposit is uh, just $100 currently, and that'll reserve your position. Uh, the EV solar charger, will uh, we're, we're projecting a retail price of $2,999. Uh, so the the remaining balance will be uh, will be applied, you know, when we get closer to shipping and and confirming all your details. Uh, we're also seeking to produce another version without all of the electronics, with a kind of a separate power bank. And so there's more coming on that, kind of more for those those applications that we just discussed, um, not specifically electric vehicle charging. Um, but yeah, everything right now can be seen at GoSun dot co forward slash ev uh to learn more about this unique new development really exciting congratulations again on i would call it fearless innovation you know <laughs> i really would because you're willing to get out there and and do stuff and turn things into reality you've got the solar boat you've got you've got a camper you've got all kinds of uh of uh, technology
I appreciate it. And yes, it, it does take some courage, but for us, it's like, it's common sense innovation too. I mean, what, what future are we dreaming here? And uh, a solar powered one seems to be the most obvious. And I'm surprised there's not more people doing this alongside us. Um, but yeah, GoSun's definitely been willing to stick their neck out there and, and try something new. And, and, um, and I think we're, you know, we're ushering in a, a brighter future and, and I, I think it, it all generally works. I mean, it might, it might be a little different than the status quo, but, um, it's actually quite convenient and, and on the long run, it's sort of better and easier than, than the, uh, than the old way of doing things. Terrific. The site again is gosun.co and uh, it's a slash EV for the, uh, for the EV right. charging. Patrick Sherwin, thank you so much for taking time with it. Thank you, Fred. It's a pleasure.